G'day everyone, welcome back, Grandma's Handbag. My name is Dean, so glad you could join us. Um, vinyl finds time, I haven't done one of these in a while, have I? I mean, look, you can do a top 100 like Steve Carlson is, but uh, the moment you've finished, what have you done for me lately? Well, it's time to get back into straight old vinyl finds because I've got tons of this stuff. Um, so we're going to get into that just a second. Um, and then we'll see where we go after that. There's even some um, contest winnings that uh, I want to show you just quickly as well. Anyway, Tony Peroni, always a classic, uh, Vinyl Rich approved. Uh, and I had to pick this up because um, for quite a while it was getting brewed here under license. <laughs> Forget that shit. This is back to Italy. Um, the proper stuff. It does make a difference where it's brewed, so hometown or home country, home water, makes it better. Good and clean. Too hard to go too wrong with that one. 5.1%. Um, corn in the bill for sure, but no problem with that. All right, vinyl finds. Mostly new, but some uh, contest winnings. Um, Blue got Blue Sky Vinyl, Chris, had a uh, 150 subscribers contest, uh, a great one there. Show us your uh, favourite uh, blues records. Um, and luckily I, I or somehow came up uh, <laughs> winning. I tried to exclude myself from the contest, but Chris was uh, far too gracious. It's his contest. And look, part of the reason why I try to get myself out of these contests, um, I've obscured the uh, addresses here, but I don't know if you can see this. Um, 40, 44 Canadian dollars to send stuff through. It's just too much. Um, Chris, I, I love that you, that you persisted with this. I really do, I really do because what we're playing now, John Hammond Live, um, is part of, uh, the, uh, contest winnings and it's great stuff. 1983, um, on Stony Plain, I think it is. Um, so rounder records, uh, in the state, Stony Plain, in uh, Canada and that's what I love as well actually having this little slice or slices of Canada uh, Canadian presses that I just wouldn't see here whatsoever in the collection now so really really appreciating that anyway John Hammond live um, really don't know a lot about John Hammond himself um, what he's playing on here though are all uh, classic blues tracks in there saddle my pony Charlie Patton um, Blind Lemon Jefferson in here, um, Willie Dixon on there, just classic slices of blues, Robert Johnson, Dust My Broom, so yeah, and from a guy what I do know is that, uh, well, he was sort of around the uh, Dylan era, I think uh, his John Hammond's dad was the one that uh, um, signed Dylan up, uh, Hammond's Folly, I think they called him early on, anyway, um, but I've never heard any John Hammond Jr. Was this John Hammond Jr. originally? Anyway, 20 years in, a hell of a live set. <laughs> really knows his way around the blues on there. Um, great, great stuff. Thank you for that. A couple more bits of um, uh, giftage as well, Chris. Jay Giles Band Centerfold. Um, <laughs> I... I don't know what to say about this. I've always thought uh, Jay Giles had an Australian connection in there somewhere. Does anyone know anything more about that? Anyway, it's um, I love that uh, jukebox punch out. You don't see that often uh, or as often in Australia either. Pink, I could have shown that if that had turned up uh, a little earlier. Never mind that one. Um, a lovely letter again from Chris, which, uh, you know, far too kind and generous, Chris. Um, and he also sent through uh, Big Joe Williams on the Archive of Folk Music label. So I haven't got a chance to listen to this one yet, but um, uh, Big Joe Williams, or I don't know a lot about either. I want to say that the um, he was an influence on the early 60s uh, UK musicians. I think he might have toured there. Um, about that time, but anyway, um, did he play a nine string guitar or am I thinking of someone else? Anyway, I love that Everest Records archive of folk and jazz label on there as well. 
Um, it's kind of setting itself up for me to be this, um, could, like a Smithsonian style uh, label anyway. Um, so I'm really looking forward to delving into that good um, liner notes or blurbs on the back there as well. Yeah, there's a, a statement of purpose for uh, Everest Records. So that's kind of um, why I get that Smith Smithsonian feel anyway. Great, great stuff. Um, I can't wait to have a listen to it. Thank you very much, Chris. And oh, and one last thing he did get to us was another um, Hal and Wolf uh, Real Folk Blues Chess uh, Original Masters CD. Uh, again, a Canadian press thing on there. So really keeping me enriched uh, with with some quality blues. Thank you so much, Blues Guy Vinyl. Um, you know, a wonderful channel and, and a real pleasure, but, um, you know, <laughs> above and beyond sending that sort of uh, stuff all the way across the oceans. Um, what, what can I say, but thank you. All right, let's get into some records. First three, won't need to talk too much about them. These are brand new um, buyers. Actually, most of the rest, I think all of the rest of them are brand new uh, records from here. The first three, though, uh, you would have seen them in the top 100 um, so I don't want to prattle on too much more. I think I've nailed down how I felt about them But look found a copy of this for uh, I think a decent discount on what it uh, normally would go for so um, Can Tag Omega 1971 Classic classic record. This is just a 2014 mute uh, issue Needed a CD upgrade. There's just no question about it now this one I think pitched somewhere in the 60s on my uh, record, but I realised that I had uh, I didn't have the record anymore. I'd given it away, um, uh, but picked up a, a Bureau B reissue uh, of uh, originally on Sky Records of Cluster and Eno. Just a beautiful album. Um, Love that kind of ambient uh, kraut rock feel. Couldn't leave that there, even though I. Pretty much paid the full uh, 30 odd dollars Australian for that one. This one here ended up in at half price actually. Um, and again, only have a CD copy of this one. Um, no real chance of ever getting a, an original press either um, UK or, or Jamaican. So um, just picked up a reissue. There's plenty of reissues floating around, but actually navigating your way around what press is best. Um, I may have got a little bit uh, happy in trying to do that, but I think that's a lot of um, reggae reissues in general. You just don't know those um, sources or the master uh, tapes for them. So anyway, um, Scratch Perry, the Upsetters there on that Island Classic label. I think this is, might be a 2013 reissue, but look, that was 15 Australian dollars. So, you know, 10 US bucks. Who's going to leave that one there? Now, the next three... Um, also all uh, half price each so I just couldn't couldn't leave these here these are over the past few months um, uh, brand new some of them are still in shrink I just haven't even got back to old listening patterns yet and I kind of need to do that actually is you know it's it, it's been a, a fair bit of a job for listening um, especially trying to get that hottest hundred out of the way but back to pleasure um, and beautiful albums like this Pet Sounds, had the CD for 20 years, but really do need a uh, vinyl copy. So, 50th anniversary, uh, reissued 2016, mono press. Um, yeah, look, it's been a while since I've heard this album, but look, there's, there's it, it missed out, just missed out on my top 100 list, um, but beautiful, beautiful stuff, regardless, you know. Um, I just wasn't wasn't made for these times. Has always killed me. Um, you still believe in me? Is is just a heart melter. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'm rabbiting. You know it. Um, great stuff to finally have a vinyl copy of it. Uh, next one as well. Look, I've probably only heard this one once. Uh, Beck Morning Phase, um, but I do know other Beck albums. I know this is kind of a successor to whether you want to say Mutations and then um, uh, Sea Change. But anyway, 
lush, opulent uh, stuff from what I remember on there. And part of the reason why I picked this up, besides it being half price, is that it was uh, a Palace um, Press, a Palace USA Press, or um, Palace in uh, Germany, I think. So, very nice pressing, beautifully made album as well. Um, so, it's going to be a very good listening experience for 15 bucks. Um, again, 10 US dollars or so. So, really, really had to make sure I picked that one up there um, so yeah those last four there all half price this next one probably was about ten dollars off a pretty expensive full price uh, Hannah the Omar introvert was going through uh, a bit of a felt phase for a while there so this is felt second album the splendor of fear I think they got reissued 2018 or so not very cheap uh, as far as reissues go, um, not badly done. Uh, I don't remember exactly who's pressed these. All I know is that they're pretty expensive if you didn't live in the UK. But I managed a fairly decent deal on this, uh, a little over $30 anyway. So I think that still is somewhere from Chelsea Girls, the Warhol movie. 1984, did I mention that? Um, anyway... This is probably my favourite, favourite felt album, I would say. Uh, they give you a poster in there and all their, you know, indie 80s mopey finery. Um, just obscuring a um, Clockwork Orange poster in the back there. And I've kept the uh, hype sticker because it's actually quite blown out and over the top. <laughs> this is really, yet... This really is a template for an age yet to come. And it pays to know the guitarist Morris Deerbank now resides in a monastery in Birmingham. <laughs> There's poetic license, and I'm probably guilty of that at the best of times, but this, this really goes over the top. Anyway, the music is great. Uh, six tracks, elegant, um, you know, I do really think of it as a fairly monochrome album, but... It paints in these delicious tones and shades of grey in there. So yeah, elegant, eloquent. There's these guitar filigrees like lace and ironwork in there. Um, kind of think of a UK indie version of television. So those interlacing guitars and things. Um, not a dud track on among the six here, but I want to leave you with a taste of the stagnant pool, um, just for an idea of the dynamics, the feel, and the guitar work on here. So have a listen to that. special um, again $15 or so <laughs> really good value uh, updating a CD copy again I know I'm just doomed to repeat this but uh, when you want your favorites on vinyl you need to grab them probably my favorite pixies although Jesus first four are really hard to separate really hard to separate anyway uh, do little on 4AD you know just Four to five short years after that uh, felt album. But a whole other world in terms of dynamics, even if it's got that monochrome 80s uh, feel in the artwork there. All right, next three I've just had for a long time. <laughs> I haven't got around to show them. It's pretty much the case with all of these records. Um, but they need to be done. Got out into the collection and show you guys. Time Out of Mind, 1997, Dylan. You know, a real resurgence, um, uh, resurgent album for this one. So this is a repress, I think, 2017. They've just popped them in, uh, popped them in uh, the double sleeve there, so you get your two LPs. I actually forgot there was a uh, 
seven inch remix version of uh, Love Sick with a live um, Cold Irons bound on the back. So maybe not a totally bad thing to pick up um, for all of that. But yeah, look, again, what to say about this one. Um, Daniel Lenoir producing, so you've got that signature feel and sound and things like that. And I think this was kind of the one that, that broke the, the camel's back with regards to Lenoir and uh, Dylan. He'd learnt everything he needed to for producing and became uh, the producer Jack Frost uh, from uh, Love and Theft onwards. But, you know, swampy sounds in there, fragmenting and fraying kind of um, things, just the way Lenoir can do. Songwriting is absolutely spot on. I mean, um, Love Sick, Not Dark Yet. There's so many good songs on here. Standing in the Doorway, Cold Irons Bound, Make You Feel My Love. It's, it's, if that isn't being done on uh, one of those those sort of, um, uh, what do you call it, singing contest um, things that happen every year where they bash Jeff Buckley, I don't know why, but that song really feels like a, a torch song. A very simple one as far as Dylan goes. Uh, and Highlands. The, all of side four on here, 16 minutes worth of uh, a trawl through, almost through Dylan's free associating mind. Not not free associating in the terms of, uh, you know, his 60s work of Desolation Row or anything like that. But, you know, a man in his, you know, late 50s or, or so, sort of really trying to work out what it's all about, even at this late stage and things, you know. And, and some amazing stuff in there. Old blues imagery. Um, just a fantastic song. Cannot rate it enough. As is the album. I've probably said way too much on that. I won't bore you on this one. Look, nearly as high a quality, I would say. Modern Times. Uh, ten songs. Dylan, 2006. Again, four, track, uh, four sides, two LPs. Really, really hard to uh, to pick a flaw with this one as well. Maybe not quite as strong as uh, Love and Theft or, or um, Time Out of Mind, but it, this is almost a go-to Dylan for me to, to put on and not have to think too much. Although that said, you know, Thunder on the Mountain, Spirit in the Water, just a great one-two punch, rolling and tumbling. So there's lots of references back to older blues and history historical songs. Working Man's Blues number two. So referring back to Merle Haggard on that one, you know. Um, Ain't Talking is still a 10 or 11 minute uh, opus, kind of like uh, uh, Highlands is as well. Anyway, um, Modern Times, great, great album. Uh, <laughs> what more to say about this one? Uh, more Blood, More Tracks, a Bootleg Series, Volume 14. So this is nearly a year old I've had this. And... Um, yeah, look, from Blood and the Tracks, uh, long awaited and just fascinating, fascinating insight into uh, how the album was made. And it just kind of, someone wrote a really good article, which I might try and find or that there, but they basically said, whichever way you slice and dice the, uh, the masterpiece of um, Blood on the Tracks, you will get a different picture each time. So... Now, here's one version here. You can get the complete, I forget what it was, six CD set, 74 tracks, where they've just thrown everything from the from the um, sessions, all the sessions or both sessions on here, or onto it. So there's another picture. You've got the finished album, which is obviously the picture we've been uh, familiar with. But then there was also the... Uh, the other version that they did for Record Store Day earlier this year, a uh, few people have picked it up. I think did um, Ellie, Lisa grab it? I'm not sure. Anyway, I was salivating watching people grab it because we just didn't get any in Australia. So I've had to content myself with this. Great stuff hearing, just hearing those first cuts of these songs, you know, in, in a sort of very short span of time. Dylan's getting them out, getting them on tape, you know, you can hear the clack of his 
uh, lapel buttons and things from his um, uh, vest on the guitar as he pulls it out. But it, it's also a reminder that, you know, 15 or so years in the game, he can work an acoustic guitar. Kind of like John Hammond is uh, 20 years in, like a master, you know. Um, so a fascinating, fascinating thing to um, to go through. If you can see that, you, you all know it. Anyway, very, very happy to have that. Maybe one day I'll find that other one. Who knows? Uh, the last one. A real, real surprise for me. Um, I, for a long time, the band Love, I thought everything stopped with uh, Forever Changes. I've had a Greatest Hits, which had a couple of other Electra things on here. From this album, For Sale. Um, so this is the 2019 uh, reissue, Summer of Love. Uh, version so I wasn't actually even aware of this you can see these uh, things here Electra or Rhino have been doing uh, summer of the 60s I think maybe since 67 2017 anyway 50th anniversary reissues uh, limited green vinyl you get a picture of that uh, I'm gonna leave you with some music uh, to lead us out so I love that Electra inner there and the pressing and that on this is just beautiful. Before I get to that though, so this is the Arthur Lee mixes. Now, what I've learnt about this album was as uh, Love were leaving Electra, they basically recorded this and their next two albums in the space of a week or two weeks um, in a warehouse, put them all down to tape, and then Electra took the first, what is it, 10 songs? Uh, and then I think Blue Thumb uh, took the next, or what was left for their next album. So this came out as their fourth album, um, early 69, I guess it is. Arthur Lee, the only sole remaining member of the original band. And I thought that initially would have been a very, very different proposition. But I've been playing this for a few months and just, I don't know what I was thinking put simply what a great album um, the Arthur Lee mixes are supposed to have a lot less reverb and things like that um, there's been tantalizing bits of it that have been released over the years in that way so I'm not sure if you if people have got an original version is it too full-on with the reverb um, I've got a tape copy uh, that was put out in the early 70s uh, and I can't really tell with that because it's tape but this thing sounds absolutely beautiful. Um, it is a Chris Bellman mastering job and then cut at Optimal Media in Germany. Um, like I said, that beautiful green, green with the uh, red Electra label. Wonderful stuff. Um, what else to say about that? I know that someone showed this on um, uh, in the YouTube vinyl community here, and I'm really, really sorry if I'm forgetting who showed it. Shout me out. Tell me if you've got this one, um, the 2019 reissue, or the original too, and uh, how, what do you think of it? Um, but I'm sorry, I've it's been a few months I've forgotten who showed it before. Anyway, uh, so happy to have this one. I'm going to leave you with a section of uh, talking in my sleep after uh, this beer and this cheers to all of you guys for checking back into the handbag. Thank you so much. Um, let me know what you think about all of these. If there's any of your favourites, um, any ones that you uh, don't rate or uh, things that you've seen around picked up recently. Anything you know about John Hammond or Big Joe Williams too, always happy to hear from you. Um, Love your work, guys. Take care. I'll talk to you all again soon. Enjoy this uh, bit of love for sale. I'm